for some strange reason, I'm going to have to do this, but I have to put disclaimers in front of my videos because people legitimately think that if any type of positive news at all releases about Call of Duty and I cover it personally, that my opinion changes for the game. So before I go ahead and say anything that happens in this video, I do not support Call of Duty 2021. I do not think it's going to turn out good. And ultimately, at the end of the day, skill based matchmaking is going to be a massive factor. And I'm actually going to be talking about that a little bit in tomorrow's video when I actually discuss Season 5 of Black Ops Cold War. It's just a massive factor to why Call of Duty is flopping, in my personal opinion. But that doesn't mean I have to give you guys fake opinions. You know, if I think something sounds pretty cool, I'm going to tell you guys it sounds pretty cool. I mean, it's not going to fix the game, but if it sounds cool, there you have it. So I'm extremely sorry to hurt a lot of you guys' feelings about making all this Call of Duty content. I know some people just can't stand when I make a Call of Duty video, but just to break it to you, the more you guys view this stuff, the more videos I'm going to make about it. Man, a lot of you guys like to watch Call of Duty, so very clearly, regardless if I buy the game or not, regardless if I support the game or not, I'm going to cover it. <laughs> it's just how things go. <laughs> But over on Twitter, and also, if you guys want to follow me over on Twitter, my link to that stuff is down in the description, along with my Twitch channel, which I live stream on that every single day, playing multiple types of FPS games. I think you guys will really enjoy that stuff. But over on Twitter, Tom Henderson, once again, a very reliable leaker, went ahead and put out a tweet saying, the current number of 6v6 maps scheduled for launch is 6 that is absurd. If you guys remember a couple of days ago, I actually covered the other leaked information that came out saying it was going to be 24 total maps in this game. And a lot of people were wondering how this was going to be distributed. A lot of people thought that they were going to be mixing the ground war maps with the 6v6 maps to quote unquote make it, you know, 24. But in reality, they're just using the same map over and over and over again. And also, a lot of people thought that when they said 24 maps, they meant DLC. So basically the same situation as Modern Warfare and Black Ops Cold War where they launched with like 7 and eight maps at launch and then over time it will equal up to 24 maps altogether but no it seems that when they said there's going to be 24 maps at launch they 110 percent meant that at launch day there's going to be 24 maps spread across the board once again not all of them are going to be for 6v6 some of them are going to be pushed aside for different types of game modes and stuff like that but at the core what i care about the most because i heard that there's going to be other mini brs and new modes coming into the game but again i don't care what i care about is 6v6 when it comes to call of duty and a very crucial part of this game specifically is the content when it comes to call of duty when it's a much smaller scaled game Maps are very important. It's not like Battlefield where you have massive scaled battles where multiple things can happen in every single game and you can replay certain maps over and over and over again and get a fresh experience. It's not like that in Call of Duty. It's 6v6, very fast paced, close quarter combat. The maps are very simplistic. So when you have no maps in the game, you end up playing the same exact map over and over and over again and also you get the same exact experience over and over and over again. So typically, like we saw back in the day with other Call of Duty games, for example, Infinity Ward games usually would release with 16 maps at launch. Pretty much, I think Call of Duty 4, Modern Warfare 2, and Modern Warfare 3, I think all three of those released with 16 maps at launch. And Treyarch games would usually release with 14 maps at launch. I believe Black Ops 1 and Black Ops 2 released with 14 maps. I think Black Ops 3 released with 12 maps. I'm not sure about World at War, but I think World at War was close to 16. I didn't do any research on World at War, but I did on the uh, past couple of Call of Duty games there. But I don't understand how anybody in this world could possibly expect me to be negative about this or hate this, not talk about this. Or even make a negative commentary about this. I don't know how anybody could expect that from me. This has been something that I have been arguing for for multiple years. Shoot, the whole Call of Duty community, not even like the negative ranters, even the positive gameplay channels. This has been a problem that has been plaguing Call of Duty that everybody agrees on. The lack of content has been horrible. We have not seen over 15 maps since Modern Warfare 3. And every single year afterwards, the maps got smaller and smaller and smaller, not by size, but by the number count of how many maps were in the game. And then we finally got to the point of Modern Warfare and Black Ops Cold War, where we finally got down to six to eight maps, bare minimum, bare bone content. And they hit us so hard that shoot, I don't even care. Even back to Black Ops 3 and Infinite Warfare and all that stuff, 13 maps, that's fine with me. 13 maps at launch is still good. It's not the same as 16 from way back in the day, but it's still something. But it took us months on top of months, on top of more months, just to get Modern Warfare and Black Ops Cold War up to that standard. So not even to the god tier standard of the old school games like Modern Warfare 2, Modern Warfare 3, the Black Ops 1, Black Ops 2 franchise and stuff like that. Not even like those standards, just back to regular normal standards that we've been playing with for 8 plus years. We can't even get that amount of content in the game anymore. It was disgusting. Truly disgusting. So to see that there's going to be 16 maps at launch. How long has it been? Like 8, 9, maybe even 10 years since we've seen this much content in a Call of Duty game? 
like I said, I, I don't expect the game to turn out good. I, I have to keep saying this because I know there's going to be people in the comment section, so I always have to make sure. I know the game is going to have issues. It's always going to have issues. But this is a massive W. We finally did something positive for the Call of Duty community. All the complaining that everybody says, why do you complain and talk crap all the time? Just stop playing the game. Just stop talking about it. This is why we argue for this exact reason. Here we go. We wanted more content. We said the game was lacking a bunch of content and it was killing the game. They finally understood what we're talking about. They listened 16 maps at launch. Sometimes in life, you just simply can't let things slide. That's how you get taken advantage of. But for some reason, there are people out there who are defending these horrible practices, just going with the flow of these horrible content drops and the lack of content in the beginning of the game and saying that people who rant and people who complain, like obviously me on my channel, <laughs> when I try to give my feedback on these things, they don't like it. They think it's, I guess, pathetic. But with an attitude like that, Activision will continuously do the same thing every single year. Do you think they care? If nobody's going to push back or fight back, that's more money for them. That is less work, less developers they need to hire for their games, more money in their pockets, because they don't have to make more maps for every single game, and nobody's going to push back, nobody's going to fight, everybody's just putting up with it, so guess what? They're going to keep doing it, but we didn't do that, and guess what happened? We fought, we pushed back, stopped playing their games, things changed, and their gang hit big time with it, and they had to make changes for it. They had to understand that if they don't go ahead and put more content in day one, it will kill the attention span of a lot of players who are trying to enjoy their game. So despite all the negatives, that's a massive W. I'm very happy about that. But moving on to another thing that was leaked about this game, Tom Henderson also said in addition to wooden doors that can be destroyed with bullets slash grenades, there's also wooden floorboards slash hatches that you can shoot through. One example, I saw someone shooting the floorboards to go from the first to the ground floor quickly. Features like this will be in Warzone. So this is something that's going to be in Warzone as well as Call of Duty Vanguard, because as we know, Vanguard's going to be on the same exact engine as Modern Warfare 2019, which is the same engine running on Warzone. So every single feature that they implement into Vanguard can very easily be put straight into a Warzone. Now, the reason I like this feature is because they're basically resolving a lot of the problems that we had with Modern Warfare. Again, I know. Oh my god, JB, make up your mind. You're talking positive about it. I know the problems that are going to be occurring in the game. I know the reasons why nobody are going to be playing it. But let's be honest here. It's cool of Sledgehammer to acknowledge something like this. Things that, once again, we have complained for the full life cycle of the whole game. We hate doors. Doors suck. Why can't we remove doors? Why can't we get them out of here? They won't listen to us. Blah, blah, this, blah, blah. We complained all year. So to see that, obviously, you no know, Activision has their fingers in it. They're probably forcing the doors in the game. And also, there are some people in Modern Warfare who do enjoy doors. And I'm assuming the developers don't want to piss them off, too. But at least Sledgehammer gave us the decency to destroy them finally. I mean, Blame Truth has been talking about that for ages. It's always hilarious. But it's true. We should be able to destroy the doors. People shouldn't be able to camp behind them, put a claymore down. The claymore literally blows the door, but it doesn't blow it off the hinges. It just slaps it open. It makes no sense. And then you reclose the door and put another claymore behind it. That door should be gone. No longer can it be used as cover. No longer can it be used as a second, third, fourth, fifth trap with a claymore. It shouldn't even be in the map. If you destroy that thing with an explosive or shoot it with a freaking shotgun, it should be blown to shreds. That's fantastic. And also being able to shoot through hatches slash floorboards is amazing as well because once again it's solving the camping issue we had in modern warfare once again we complained all year long everybody just sits in corners nobody moves in modern warfare this is the slowest game of all time again i don't know i truly don't know how anybody could tell me to be negative about this how this is not good news or how to make a negative commentary about the specific topic they basically said screw the campers if you don't like them you can just go right under them in their building and forget the claim wars behind the door just literally shoot right through the floorboard get them out of the building everything is encouraging movement shoot forget the doors now if you think it's a claim we're behind it just blow the door open with your gun bam Right there and there, you will see if it's a claymore there. You can choose if you want to actually attack that building or if you don't want to attack it. And if they do try to challenge you back, you can just go right downstairs and shoot up through the floor. I think, honestly, personally, I, I feel like a lot of people can find ways to say this is very campy friendly. And honestly, I encourage you guys to think of ways that could be camper friendly. I might make a video about that because this could go the complete opposite way. This feature might allow players to just sit in a corner all game long, but... I, at the moment right now, cannot think of anything that could be negative right now. And also, I gotta say, it's pretty innovative. We've never really seen destruction in Call of Duty. 
I mean, ever. Seriously, ever. <laughs> so seeing that they're actually taking the jump to put destruction in their game is a nice little twist. But I'm going to say it now because I, I have to put the stamp of approval to make sure people don't hound my ass down. There's things that are going to weigh back the game. I'm not going to go into discussion with them. I'm not going to describe them because I've already made multiple commentaries about them. But it's, it's sad because I really do think that these changes are pretty unique. But... Activision is going to hold it back. But guys, thanks so much for checking out this video. If you enjoyed it, make sure you leave a like, a bomb, say hate it, leave a dislike. Also, if you're brand new and you enjoy the content, don't forget to subscribe and hit that notification button. Also, if you want to chat me, there's two ways to do so. I have a Twitter and a Discord. Both links are down in the description. And also, if you want to catch me live streams and video games, I do over on Twitch. Link to that is in the description as well. But guys, thanks so much for tuning in. See you on the next one. Peace out.